Hey guys, today we're going to be drawing an accent lounge chair from start to finish. I'm going to be showing you how to do a quick sketch with marker. These are the supplies I've used. I have cinnamon toast, oatmeal, wheat, eggshell, cool gray, 30% and 20% light umber, goldenrod, light tan, and warm gray 90. And these are all Prismacolor. When we start, we're going to just basically sketch out the form. Um, you're going to do, you know, all your, your furniture is going to be in basic four forms, a cube, cylinder, cone, or a sphere base. And this one is basically um, based off of the cube, except the cube is reclining. So it's kind of a trapezoid cube. So that's stretched a little bit. So um, I'm trying to do the arms like and mimic the slope that it has. I understand that this is going to be a lounge chair. So the front of the seat is going to be higher than the back of the seat because you want to be able to slouch in this chair, not be upright, um, you know, because you want to be comfortable. All right, so I'm doing everything very sketch-like with my mechanical pencil um, because this is a quick sketch. Now, if I were going to work on this in terms of uh, it's going to be a nice presentation drawing, I would probably... Um, transfer it onto marker paper before I do my rendering, but because I'm just doing this as a uh, study, I'm just going to keep working on this, this same piece of paper. Alright, so um, this arm kind of, it's fluid and it goes up and then it swings back around and attaches to the back side. So you're going to look at the positive and negative space of your uh, chair just to kind of help you correct when you're doing your sketches. Um, and then you, know, you can take your time and correct it. I try not to do dark pencil lines until I'm happy with that specific um, angle or form. Um, and this is supposed to be a white or a cream chair. So you don't want to have too much uh, pencil line, but um, you know you do what you have to do. If it gets too messy, yeah, go ahead and clean it up and, and go on and use a different piece of paper. But again, this is supposed to be a study, so I'm okay with using my pencil lines everywhere. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other arm to get that little swing back. And then once I'm happy with it, we'll be uh, starting with the marker. All right, so now that we've done the sketch, we're going to go ahead and start with marker. Now, this initial color that I have is um, eggshell, and I'm going to do that for wherever my cream-colored cushion will be. Um, you know, the most common thing I see students do is whenever they have a white chair or a white sofa, they don't put any color at all. But you need to put some kind of color on there because it's not always just pristine white. There's, uh, if you look around you at the white, you have different shades of gray within the white. Um, sometimes the white is warm, sometimes it's cool, but there's some kind of value change that occurs. So you've got to be able to put that on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and layer it with some cool gray to give it some kind of shadow, like where it's going to be. You know, so it has an illusion of depth uh, and volume here. Now, 
I'm not going to put it everywhere, but I'm going to put it in some places. Now, this is where, you know, your markers that are kind of dead come into play. Like if they're not as vibrant as they used to be, like saturate, like this guy right here is my wheat. It's pretty old, but it still has some kind of life to it. So I'm happy to use it where my light values may be. Um, the more saturated colors, it might be too, too dark. So that's why I keep all my markers until they're like no longer functioning. Um, sometimes I will date it in terms of when I order them and when they come in. So I'll know which one is more a more fresh marker versus an older marker. But I have markers that I've had since I was a student way back in Stone Ages. All right, so I have wheat, I'm sorry, oatmeal that goes around the the base of the, um, what do you call it, the leg, the framing. Now I've listed up here some of these colors that I've used. Some of these are, are, are done or dead, but I don't think I start using them, but I notice that some of them will be dead. Cinnamon Toast, I think, is a pretty current color, so you can definitely use this. I use my chisel end. I like to use the chisel end because I like rotating it. Um, I don't generally use my fine tip unless I'm trying to get a very specific angle. Um, but I, I generally um, like using the chisel end when I render. Um, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and fill some areas with value. And I don't, I don't like to go dark so fast. I, I like to build. Um, like this guy right here is, is a brown and it looks like it's dying so I'm not going to be able to use that. I think I just retired it because it's it doesn't even flow so I'm gonna have to say goodbye to it. Pull something else out. It doesn't work that well. Okay so I'm gonna throw that one away. Sienna Brown is another color. And this is a little more red than I want. So I need to counteract that with something else. But this is a quick study. I mean, in theory, I'm supposed to like put a little swatch to the side to test it out. Um, this is goldenrod. Goldenrod is my base color uh, for this particular wood that I'm doing. And it gives me a little bit of confidence in going the medium tone because it's not super dark right now, but it is lighter than, I mean, it's darker than it was before when I had just used um, oatmeal. So now this is warm gray that I'm using as my, where my shadow is. This is, this is pretty dark. So I need to find something that will blend that. And I'm using cinnamon toast to try to find a bridge between my super dark warm gray and my cinnamon toast and here's where I'm trying to do my reveal of shadow like where the shadows are um, for quick sketches I like to have some, um, some kind of range of value so it's not just all light it's not all darks but some kind of contrast and value um, so I'm going to use light umber as the bridge because it's a it's a better brown than the ones I had used before. They were a little too red. Um, so this light umber is a good um, muted color to use for wood. So right now I'm using still the chisel in and I'm trying to control it so that I can get the start and stop. And um, I'm going to go ahead now. For the fine areas, I'm going to use the thin end if I'm trying to you know, control an, a specific area, but mainly I use the thick end. But this area, because I want to make sure I have my little um, light area reveal, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to use the fine tip. Um, and then I'm going to blend it into my existing goldenrod base.
All right, now that I've gotten some of that outline, I'm going to come back and um, I'm going to use goldenrod in the pockets so that uh, there's some kind of transition between the value. I'll come back with light umber on top of that and it just gives it a more uh, rich tone. You can see the underbase of it a little bit and then as well as the top stuff. And then go a little bit darker. I'm trying to keep my highlights. Um, and if you like, you know, purity and marker only, then this is where you're going to stop. If you want to play with adding highlights, you can pull out a white gel pen and start using it where the highlights will be. But don't forget to add shadow underneath the chair so it doesn't look like it's floating in outer space. Um, I do my last little bit of shadows on the opposite side of where the light is coming from so that that arm looks like it has an edge, a soft edge, but an edge nonetheless. Uh, the last little bit is a white gel pen just to make my highlights a little more strong. So this is, you know, totally up to you. If you have it and you want to use it, this is where you're going to use it. If you just want to keep it as marker and you don't have to use it. Uh, I tried to keep the areas, the highlighted areas light. Um, but this just defines it just a little bit more. It makes it a little bit brighter. All right. I hope that helps you and I'll see you next time.